I want to show you how to make a cam clamp like this by hand. Um, these clamps are universally used by instrument makers and box makers and they're very lightweight and they work really well on those kind of projects. The projects that have thin walls that um, need delicate pressure and you can't apply a lot of pressure on the, on the project that you're building. For instance, here's a, an example here. I've just made a box like this. I want to glue the bottom on and I need to put some light pressure around the rim here. You pull this apart. These are infinitely adjustable. Pull this, squeeze together here and then apply pressure here and it doesn't move very much but boy it does apply a good pressure. So here again you can see how they work. They give you the right pressure, they're very lightweight. Um, they don't apply a massive pressure but they apply exactly the right pressure. So I think we'll, you'll enjoy making these, they don't take very long to make. You don't need a lot of skill to make them and I'm going to walk you through the process now. So let's get started. First of all, we need some materials. So we're going to, I'll give you the sizes for these particular ones. Now you can make these longer this way and you can make your bar as long as you want. You can do whichever you want. These are going to be clamps that will receive eight inches in between here. So I've got actually eight and one eighth. So I've made my bar is 11 and a half inches long and that gives me a bar that will be adequate for the kind of project I just showed you. But I'm going to show you how to make the first one and then you can make as many as you want. You need two of these blocks, they're the same size and these are six inches long, one and a half inches wide and I have mine one inch thick. The bars are one eighth of an inch by three quarter inch stock and as I said they're eleven and a half inches long for an eight inch clamp. If you want a ten inch clamp then they're going to be proportionally larger. So let's take a look here. I just bought some steel bar stock here like this from any, um, probably a hardware shop. A lot of uh, hardware stores will have this. B&Q would have it. Home Depot will probably have it. Those will be, you'll be paying a premium price for it there. But I can get about, uh, I think a, a clamp will cost me about one pound to make. So <laughs> roughly that's the case. So we're going to cut a bar to length first of all, just for those of you who have zero metal working skills. This is my overall length here. I'm going to use a pencil or a nail, you can use either. In this case I'm using a nail to mark my stock. Uh, secure it in the vise, nice and solid. Watch the close out here, watch your knuckles, you don't want breakage here, safety is important. You can open this up here just to allow the blade through. That's the stock piece you need for your steel. Get rid of that. And I'm just going to file the burrs off again. It's safety. Drop it in the vise. 10 to 12 inch flat single cut file will work for this. File. Ooh, that is so bad. Go a little lower, see if we can get that away. There you go. Ooh, that is so hard on our sound man. Drop it in a little nearer to the surface here. A little better. Filing is a skill, definitely. Clean up the ends. I'm going to remove the corners. These have burrs on. These burrs are sharp. Take the corner off. Flip over. Take the corner off. This is just getting your stock ready for you to handle. If 
flip it here. Take the corner off the aris again. And now we're ready to start woodworking. And now you know what you're doing with your steel stock. Let's just discuss a little bit about the wood. We've got rid of the messy metal working pretty much. We have a little bit of drilling and stuff to do. This is going to be mortised into here, as you can see on the end of here. It's going to be mortised. It's going to have two roll pins in here. This has two roll pins here on either side. This adjusts here. It's got a screw cinch down there. This stops this from splitting. Um, we've got a little bit of shaping to do. It's very simple. This is a saw curve, a board hole, a few little uh, things like that uh, to work on. This is the exact size. It's three quarters of an inch dead on. The steel size probably will be exact, but work to the steel, not to a measurement. I may say three quarters of an inch, but you have to work to the size of the steel stock you've got. So we're going to make a hole through here and um, we're going to do some layout on these. These need to be together. We've got uh, some measurements here. So I'm going to measure from the end of this part here, from here to here, is three and seven eighths. I'm sure three and seven eighths could be four inches if you wanted it to be. So I'm going to make a line across here and use my square across the two, like this. This is not in any way rocket science. This is not, it doesn't need to be as exact, but you have to have something you're working to. Square these lines up onto this face and up onto this face. This will show you the start and stop lines that you're going to be working to, like this. Now, three eighths of an inch up here, but we're going to set a gauge actually. This is three eighths of an inch here. This doesn't show too well, I'm sure, for you to follow, but that's because it's a darker wood. This is Sapili, which is very good for this because it doesn't split easily. And it, it resists uh, splitting in actual fact. So pretty well. Sometimes it splits. This is this part here. Let's see. Can you see how this now corresponds to this part here. So right on this inside corner here, I want a four millimeter hole to go all the way through there on this, on the moving piece only, on the slide piece only. Well, let's put this one aside for now. This will do my second piece on the other. So I'm going to replace this because this doesn't have this uh, split down here. Should have noticed that. I'm going to put the hole through here first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill through from one side first. So can you see here, there is my line. I'm going to go on this side of this line and on this side of the line. So I'm going on the internal corner here. And what this is, it's a stop hole. It's, it's basically to stop the hole from splitting beyond that and going into here. It gives a little bit of a, a break point there. And I'm going to do the same on this side. So I'm on this side of the line here and this side of the line here. So once you've drilled through from both sides, that drilling from both sides enables you to compensate. If you were slightly out of square one way or the other, the drill will pull itself to the weakest or the path of weaker or least resistance. So it will align the hole inside and that's what I've got now. So what I want to do next is I want to come about quarter of an inch deep here. I've got to put a scallop in here just like this. And this scallop goes on both the fixed head and the slide. So I want to go in here, quarter of an inch down here, and I want to leave one eighth of meat on there. And the same on this one. This quarter of an inch is not exact. 
it doesn't really matter whether it's quarter of an inch or three sixteenths but what does matter is whether the two heads align when they come together like this so we're going to put let's make one and then use the other one as a template so we're going to come one and a quarter in from the end of the piece of the uh, here we're going to make a one and a quarter inch footprint on the end here like that so use your square to get this quarter of an inch and then we've got a distance of three and seven eighths which is where we had the hole so we already have this marked here and then in here this could be any radius you want it to be I'm going to take my quarter of an inch line up here and then I'm just going to feed this line around here like this and I don't want it to be too tight it's not necessary for it to be too tight and the same on this side here you could use a can if you want to draw around a can you could use anything you want if you want to make it very uniform like this you can but it's not really necessary let's go ahead and cut this one I'm going to come inside the radius and stop above my lines So you can, can you see inside there, Phil? That gives me a point to cut to with my chisel. Just take a, a wide chisel. Now this is one inch and this is one inch, so if you've got a wider chisel, all the better. So go right on the line, bevel down, and go either side so you can widen the cut so your choice of wood I, 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 is up to you maple I think would work just fine cherry would be fine just go ahead and clean up that so I'm down to my line um, uh, I didn't put the other line on this side did I this goes to here and then work from this end as well just work in bevel down and use the bevel just ride the bevel to smooth up the cut and then here I would work down a little bit at a time here just check the grain orientation see which way the grain is going to run this seems fine to me happy there so you can come in with your chisel across the grain carefully Just nudge that with the heel of your hand just to clean out that waste wood. Don't go all the way through if you can avoid it. Work from both sides. Take most of the waste out. Pretty close. Same on this side. Down again. And that's actually enough. You don't really need to do any more than that because these are clamps and just using them will knock off all those rigid, rough edges over six months. But of course we're craftsmen and women and we're looking for quality in our work. So I would probably pare this down until it's acceptably smooth and level. Just tease those fibres down the corner of your chisel. Feather into it here. It's a bit rugged right now, but it's going to be fine. So 
So I only have one eighth of an inch between here and a cut line that I'm going to put in here in a minute that I'm going to use the saw for. And if you're fortunate, as I am, you can use a rasp in here now. To pare down, just to take those down a little bit. Just a cabinet rasp like this one. Check that profile, see if this profile works. That's a little bit big. So I'm going to go with a smaller detail rasp here just to clean up inside there, make it nice and even. And if you don't have one of these, wrap a piece of sandpaper around a dowel to go in here. That's probably close enough for me to sand that now. Just clean it up. Take the splinters off any splintery bits and that's the first sha um, shaping that we need to do take the corners off and now we need to come in along this line here with the saw and meet this on the underside of the hole right in that corner I'm going across here. First of all, I want this to be parallel to the surface. Like this. Start dropping my hand to follow the line exactly as close as I can. Normally I wouldn't be sawing that way, would I? Because I'd be sawing into my vise. So I'm going to change here. I was doing that so you could see. Now I'm going to come down this face here and I'm going to drop my hand down here following the line I'm going to turn around and come from the other side just to even out the cut I've just gone into the hole. Can you see it's just offset? I wanted that. I want one eighth of wood on here. This allows this to flex here. Come in from the other side. Now, obviously, I'm too shy to get to the bottom of the hole. Ooh there so because of the length of my saw you may have a tenon saw that's got full width mine doesn't so I'm going to switch saws and drop in my bow saw and I could have done the whole thing with this that would have worked just fine too that's that Fold your sandpaper up, go inside here and just sand that, take the corners off, ease on everything. We have quite a bit more work to do to this yet. We've got to put a recess in here that takes the cam, the lever cam on the top. So we've got a little bit of mortising to do. So this goes in this part and we have a mortise to chop in here and these have to be quite exact. So we'll lay those out next and um, we'll get together and we'll start chopping holes and shaping a little bit more. Mm -hmm.